If you are struggling with creating characters that maintain the same appearance, this video will help you solve that problem. If you already have a story and need to create the illustrations, you will most definitely love this workflow. In this video, I will show you how to create unlimited amounts of consistent characters very easily and I will also show you how to include multiple characters in the same image and keeping them all consistent. I know a lot of people are struggling with that so I have taken it into consideration. It's crazy how fast AI is developing. With the latest Flux model training, I can have my characters do anything I want in different poses, expressions and angles and wearing whatever outfit you can imagine. We'll be training a model and before you get scared off when I say train a model, I just want to say that this has never been easier and I will guide you through every simple step of the way so you can create exactly what you want. So I recently went on a trip to Vietnam and I thought why not create a few illustrations about some beautiful places there. To further prove my point of this model being consistent, I have chosen to include not two but three different characters in every page of this story. The main character will be a Vietnamese boy, the sidekicks will be a colorful rooster and the back haw puppy which is a dog commonly found in Vietnam. So let's see what makes this process possible. Well, lately I have been training different models for the characters that I create for different projects and a few days ago, Flux model training got even easier and more beginner friendly. For my training, I use OpenArt because of its speed and I never seem to make it work when I run these models locally. All we need is six different images of the same character to train a model. However, I have used at least 10 images when training my models to get better results and I will show you how you can do that very easily. Inside OpenArt, you can generate your own images and try something like a character sheet to get multiple results of the same character in various angles. However, in my case, I use Midjourney for the initial steps because it's still the best in my opinion for the quality. What it lacks though is model training for consistent characters. They have a feature which is called character reference and you can upload an image of a character or an object as reference. However, it's nothing close to what Flux can do. So let me quickly show you how you can get 10 consistent images of your character for the model training. If you have Midjourney, just copy and write this prompt here. You can find it in the description below and make your own adjustments. I have multiple videos covering this step, so I will not waste too much time on it. But the trick here is to generate a character sheet and use both the zoom out and pan features inside of Midjourney to get even more results of your characters. This step can be repeated until you are satisfied with the results. I did this for all three of my characters until I had around 10 different good images per character. Remember that the images don't need to be perfect just yet. Just make sure your images show your character in different angles and a combination of close-ups on the face and full body view. Once you have enough images of your character, we'll move on to the next step. Now that we have our images, we'll need to make some minor adjustments to some of them before training the model. Remember that if you expect great results, you'll need to train the model on good images. If this step seems hard for you, don't worry, you can generate more images or use in painting until you get better outputs of your characters. I use Photoshop to edit my images, but you can use any other photo editing tool that you're comfortable with. A free alternative is photopea.com, which is an online web-based photo editor and it includes all of the tools that you'll need for this step if you don't have Photoshop. Now moving forward, we'll need to focus on the details. Here for example is an image of our colorful rooster that I like and want to include in the training of my model. However, it's missing the green and black tail. All I do here is select the tail from another image of our rooster, copy and paste it into our image and remove the edges with a soft eraser to make it blend with the rest of the rooster. Here is another example. Here I want to make sure that the model I am about to train will give me beautiful feathers and tail in every image and angle. So for this front view image I need to add the tail as it would be visible from this perspective. Using the same method we can even merge different expressions to create new ones for our characters. Once you learn to use a few tools, your imagination is the limit of what's possible. Here I merged these two images of our puppy. One is with closed eyes and the other is with open eyes. Now we have an image of our dog angry and winking at the same time. 
We can even go further and use the same image to get slightly different poses. This requires a bit more imagination, but the process is the same. We use what we already have to create more variations of our character. Flux is really great at creating hands, but it can mess up the feet sometimes. However, it's nothing we can't solve, right? Now that we have kicked the problem out of the way, let's move on to the part where we train our models to be consistent and add multiple characters in the same image. Here is an example of both the rooster and the puppy wearing the karate kimono. At first, the puppy isn't interested to participate, but the rooster knows how to change her mind. All right, now that we have 10 images of each character, we're ready to train a model. For this part, I use open art. There is a link in the description below, which will take you to this page directly where you can train your model. Since it's so beginner friendly, you don't need that many steps to make it work. The model is already set to flux, and this menu here to the left is where you'll upload your images. So let's train the model for the colorful rooster. On the top, I'll select character because my goal is to get consistent characters. You can also train a model on a specific style, only a face or object or product. I will not have the time to cover it all on this video, but the product one has a lot of potential for dropshippers and e-commerce. Imagine how much money a company could save by using a tool like this. Below, we'll need to give our model a name. You can write whatever you want here. I'll go with rooster. The third step is to describe the style. This is a bit more important than naming the model. Here, we'll need to describe our style. It says that this is crucial for model quality. Keep it short and focused. For example, cyberpunk digital art or line drawing. And if you change your mind, you can always edit this later. I wrote cartoon rooster colorful. And now for the last and most simple step, simply drag and drop or click to upload your images. The more images you have, the better, of course. I recommend at least 10 images for each character and you'll get great results. Once the images have been uploaded, just click on the blue button that says train your model and your model should be ready shortly after. I noticed it took around 7 to 15 minutes in my case. Once your model has been trained, click on create to come to this page. This is where the fun happens. You can already see that I have played around with the models and generated a few images. I will quickly show you how to generate images and select your own model using the menu on the left here. So where it says model, click on switch. There are a bunch of really useful models already. However, we need to click up here on my models to find our private model that we just trained. Let's go with the rooster. Down here under the prompt section is where we enter the description of our image. You can write as detailed as you want or just keep it short. No matter what, you'll get a great and consistent image of your character. Let's try with rooster in a club looking at a diamond. Below is a few more settings which I can cover briefly. We have the negative prompt where you can write things that you do not want to see in the image. For example, if your prompt was a field of colorful flowers, in the negative prompt you could write red flowers. Now this would give you an image of a field of flowers in various colors except red flowers. Some great keywords to include in the negative prompts are blurry, pixelated and deformities. Another great thing about open art is this button here which says commonly used. If we choose general, you see that a bunch of keywords are added automatically which helps us get even better results from our model. If we scroll down all the way, we have the option to change the aspect ratio as well. For now, I'll leave it as it is. Lastly, you can increase the number of images to generate. I'll increase this to two so we have more to choose from. Now click create to start generating. I will not pause the video so you can see for yourself how long it takes to generate an image. Spoiler alert, it's really fast. And here we go. Two different images of our rooster looking at a big diamond in what seems to be a colorful club. Look at the consistency of our character. Great results with so little effort. Let's try one of our other models that we trained. I'll go with a puppy. Let's go with something relaxing. Puppy on the beach wearing black sunglasses, beautiful scenery. Let's change the aspect ratio to landscape for this one. And again, I want multiple results, so I changed the number of images to two. And here is our cool puppy on the beach on a sunny day, wearing cool sunglasses and enjoying the sun. Getting that vitamin D boost that I'm sure so many of us need. 
The quality and consistency of our character is great. I am blown away by how good the Flux model is. Prior to this model, I was not very interested in training models because they used to lack the level of consistency that I'm usually after for my projects. I usually use Photoshop to manually fix the characters, but now it's much easier with this model inside of OpenArt. I don't have to worry about the consistency and my characters changing appearance. Instead, I can put my effort and energy into creating more characters and create even better illustrations. Lately, more and more authors that I work with are interested in learning and creating the illustrations of the books by themselves or at least be involved in the process. I believe this is a great opportunity to get into editing images if you do have the time for it. The AI models are getting better, faster and more reliable. All you need is to learn the last 30% of manual work to put the different elements together and you only get better at it when you start doing it. Here are a few illustrations I created including our three interesting characters. I mainly use Photoshop and I strongly recommend it if you're trying to get into creating high quality books or stories. The user interface might feel a bit overwhelming at first, however, it's very easy to learn. Remember that you don't need to know how to use every tool or click on every button inside of the program to get to your desired results. Just learn to use a few of the basic tools and you'll be just fine. For this illustration, I have added the rooster and the puppy both wearing swim goggles which was generated by Flux. I add details like shadows, reflections, a little blur around the characters and some of the fishes to give it a sense of motion. The bubbles are important as well. I used open art and generated some images of bubbles and put them in various places in the illustration. Once you get the hang of it, it is meditative and relaxing knowing you can add whatever you want and make the story come to life. This illustration here is inspired by Halong Bay. I found out that the water villages, mountains and nature here was one of the inspirations behind the second Avatar movie, The Way of Water. If James Cameron did it for Avatar, who am I not to create something inspired by this magical place? However, unlike Avatar 2, it didn't take me 10 years to finish this. Since it's only a single illustration, it only took me 5 years. Enough with the jokes, let's get back to the illustration. For this one, I generated the image using the custom model for our Vietnamese kid. Unlike the previous illustration, I mentioned a rooster and a white puppy in the prompt. I knew that it wouldn't give me a perfect image, however, I just used the AI to create the spaces for the characters that I would later add myself. This is a pretty good trick that I use from time to time. After that, all I did was to remove the undesired inconsistent characters using the generative fill inside of Photoshop and then add my own characters using the images from Flux inside of OpenArt. I add a few colorful dragonflies and apply some motion blur to make it appear as if they're flying. I added one in front of our puppy as if the dog is watching it fly by. I like how the final image turned out, but there are still a lot of details I can add to make it even better. This one here is inspired by the train street in Hanoi. It's a street where you have shops and restaurants on both sides and occasionally all the chairs and tables have to be moved to the side because a train passes by. As the train passes, it's literally 10 to 20 inches away from you. I loved it and it's crazy that something like this exists. It was like something sketched by Hayao Miyazaki. I asked one of the restaurant owners if there had been any accidents and he said not in 15 years. And last time it happened, it was a tourist who wanted to touch the moving train. Luckily, he only had some scratches. For this one, I found an image of the rooster running and I added it to the right side of the image. And then I put our puppy on the left side and added some shadows. I did the same thing with the rooster and added some motion blur and used the generative feel and put a motorbike in the background. In this one, the sidekicks are playing a game together and the main character is watching from the side. I generated this image using the model of our puppy and this one using the model of our rooster. I removed the background and put him beside our puppy. Again, we need to add the effect of the character being behind the grass. Here, I just used the eraser and removed a few lines starting from the rooster's feet. This is another way of making the grass appear as if it's sticking up. I added some extra shadows and proceeded to create a second expression for our puppy. The sleeve didn't look that great so I had to put in some manual work and finally draw something myself. That's enough manual work for this year. Now let's add the main character even though he is not needed anymore. I replace his head with another expression and angle and paint the neck 
with the same color as the previous image to make them blend. I change the coloring a little bit and add some shadows. Now for the feet and the grass, I do the same thing here. I pick the eraser tool and remove the lines starting from the feet and it gives the effect of the grass sticking out in front of his feet. Now let's not forget to add our favorite blur effect before adding the last shadow. Even though it's not my favorite illustration out of this, I like how it turned out. Who do you think wins this game? the smart puppy or the stubborn rooster with the bird's eye view? Let me know in the comments below. While creating these illustrations, my favorite character has been the rooster. Another favorite thing is this trick here that I use to put the rooster behind the grass. This is great for making your character appear as if they live and breathe in the environment instead of a simple copy and paste into the image. I use the magic wand tool which is great at selecting an area similar in color and stop at a different color. For this illustration we see that the grass is a lighter color where the sun hits and the dark part above it creates a contrast which makes it really easy to select the grass. Now using this selection I just remove that specific part from our rooster and it creates this effect of the rooster appearing behind the grass. Yeah it's as easy as that if you really want to learn. Now the next step is to add some shadows. A good clue here here is to look at the boy and the direction of his shadow. Now let's do the same for the rooster and align the shadow in the same way. I finish it off by adding some blur to add a feather effect to the edges. If you've noticed I have used the blur effect to achieve various effects and feelings in the illustrations so far. This is what I mean by learning only a few tools and features of these editing tools and getting very far with it. For the final illustration I added a second dog. Do you like dogs? Thanks. What? Yeah, dogs. Dogs. You like dogs? Ah, oh, dogs. Here I wanted to make it appear as if he was jumping in front of the main character and into his shadow. I selected some areas on the front legs and the back together with the neck and behind the ears. Just make it darker and decrease the opacity. This piece is inspired by the misty mountains of Sapa and the beautiful villages there. Now don't forget to subscribe and check out openart.ai if you really want to create consistent characters. And if you're interested in learning Photoshop, check out the link in the description below. I might have something for you. Bye.